Earlier we saw how synchronization can be used to prevent race conditions. We also talked about the fact that synchronization can actually slow things down and make it so that it isn't worth parallelizing. Speed isn't the only issue with synchronization. Turns out that over-synchronizing your code can lead to one of the other main problems with uh, multi-threading, and that is deadlock. Deadlock occurs when a group of threads are waiting for each other. It could just be one thread waiting for another one to finish before it can do things. But basically, they sit around waiting for each other, and none of them do anything. That's deadlock. Now, before we look at deadlock, I realized that all of the examples of race conditions that I had given were all using par. They were all using the uh, parallel loops, or par parallel collections, and then generally writing loops on them. And I want to make it clear that that does not have to be the case. We can make a race condition quite nicely with futures as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two futures, and in each one, I'm going to add a million to a counter. And of course, we expect that if we do this twice, that the result should be, well, C and T should have a result of 2 million. Now, note that the way I'm doing this, I'm just using these futures to spawn off threads that do work. As soon as the main thread finishes, those will be done. If I were to print line count right here, it probably wouldn't be much bigger than zero. It's possibly worth running it so that you can see that. Okay, there, zero. Neither one of these threads even had a chance to, to increment. So I would need to make sure they both finish, sleep for a bit. Now, of course, the fact that I am doing this, the fact that I am taking some result that have been in the, the futures and I'm not doing a for each or a map or a filter on my future, that's probably a bad sign to start with. So, you know, the way that this is being done is not how we want it, but this should have been about 2 million. Clearly, it's not. Uh, well, now you might argue it's possible that these didn't finish. So, how about we do this for each and then print line F1 done. And we can do the same thing for the second one, F2 done, because maybe they would have taken longer than the second. There's no way they take longer than the second. They're only counting to a million. But just to make sure, we can show that they both completed. They were both done with all of their adding. And once again, we have a number that is significantly smaller than the 2 million that we expect. So I just want to make it clear here that futures can have race conditions too, and that we have to worry about it. So the issue of deadlock. Deadlock occurs when we have these multiple threads that are waiting on each other, often through synchronization. There are actually other waiting mechanisms that we'll talk about later, but generally it's because you are synchronizing and you've, you've caused some problems. To illustrate this and show how we can get in in our code, I want to make two mutable collections. So we'll import collection mutable. And I'm going to make two buffers. And it really doesn't matter what's inside of them because I'm actually not going to do anything with them. I'm just going to act like I was doing something with them. But because they're mutable, it is reasonable to say that I would want to synchronize on them. And that's what we're really going to do. The only thing we're going to do with B1 and B2 is call their synchronize methods. Now, in a real program, we would have some type of work that we need to do. And there would be some input that tells us how much work we would do. I don't have real work to do here. So I am just going to sleep the thread for however long in milliseconds they you know, they tell us to. Once again, a real program, this would have real code, it would be doing real work, it would probably be doing real work on these buffers. So, how about this? Use buffers. We're going to pass in buff1, which is a mutable dot buffer of string, and buff2 which is another mutable buffer of string. And what I want to do in here, so the idea is we have some code. We're going to call do work twice. The first time, 
the idea is it's only modifying things inside of buff one. So I need to lock it down. So I call synchronized on it and then we do some work and we're going to do one second's worth of work here. But then I need to do some more work, but this other work is going to modify buff one and buff two. So I already have the lock for buff one. So now I'm going to synchronize on buff two and I'm going to do some more work. We'll do another second worth of work here. Okay. Now I'm going to call this twice. I'm going to make one future that calls use buffers and we'll pass it B1 and B2. Okay. Just to show that this can work and actually I am going to let's make this pause less than a full second because we don't really care about that. Obviously these take at least two seconds to occur so I am going to sleep for three seconds and then we'll print line main done. We can put on here when this is done for each print line call one done. As that print line implies, we're going to have another call here in just a bit. Okay. Let's try running that. Yep. Call one done, main done. Okay, no problem. Everything's happy. Now I'm going to call the same method, but I'm going to pass it B2, B1. So what's that going to do? Well, our first future is going to synchronize on B1. It's going to pause for a second, and then it's going to synchronize on B2. Then it's going to pause for another second, and then it will finish up. The second call, this is now B2. And so it is going to synchronize on B2 first, pause for a second, and then call B1. If I run this, yeah, main finished, but neither call one nor call two completed. That's because they both got deadlocked. The first call locks B1, while the second call, and it locks B1 like immediately. The second call locks B2 immediately. After a second, the first call tries to get B2 and can't, so it sits there and waits. And the first, and then the second call tries to get B1, but it can't, so it sits there and waits. So they're both waiting on the other one in order to be able to do their work. Now this is a fairly simple and therefore contrived example, but the issue here, really, if you have a lot of synchronization in your code, if you have many different calls to synchronize, it's not hard to have, you might not see a synchronized nested inside of a synchronize, but you could have this synchronized call another function or method that has a synchronized inside of it. And now, as soon as you've done that, you've opened the door for deadlocks. And deadlocks are remarkably difficult to diagnose and to debug because they don't tell you anything. Okay, this didn't tell us that there was any problem whatsoever. They just sat there silently. They are both waiting for the other. So, don't over-synchronize your code. Be very careful with your synchronization to make sure that you don't accidentally nest them. Once again, the ideal way to do things is to use the futures or the parallel collections, things where they've already worked out all the kinks and as long as you use them in their appropriate way, everything winds up being deterministic. We're also about to see in the coming videos a different approach to doing parallelism called actor parallelism. And actor parallelism is another way that you can do things in parallel without having the possibility for, for deadlocking. Because you just you want to try to avoid deadlocking. You don't want to synchronize unless you absolutely have to. So it's nice to have ways of getting around it. You just have to know that it exists in case you hit a wall where you absolutely have to synchronize something.